offensive lineman, though seldomly seen through the course of the game, is one of the key parts to the football team. Simply for the fact that behind every great pass, every great run, there's always a great block. And behind every great block, there's a basic set of fundamentals, which I'm going to teach you today. The starting point for an offensive lineman, before he even attempts to make a block, is always at the line of scrimmage, before the ball's even snapped. And that's his stance. Now, the basic offensive line stance is somewhere around shoulders apart. If you're a little bigger, a little smaller, you can vary it a little bit. But the thing is, bend the knees a little bit and get yourself in a comfortable position. Get the elbows on the knees. And before you go down, you always want to pick a point that you can get back out of, go to the left, go to the right, or go forward. So the thing is, you want to be comfortable. Don't get too much weight forward and don't get too much weight to the back. You have to be able to go to the left, the right, forward, and you might have to pull. Make sure it's comfortable. Don't get yourself in a position that's gonna hurt you trying to make a block. One important thing to always remember about the stance of an offensive lineman is don't tip yourself off. Again, get your feet shoulder width, but it's important on where you place your hand. Too far out in front, you only have one direction to go, and the defensive lineman will know that. The hand too far back, if you're going to sit on your heels, he knows it's going to be a pass. The same way, if you're going to lean to the right or lean to the left, you don't want to show him which direction you're going. Don't give him any advantages. Two key points in executing any type of block. And it's not size and strength, because you always play against all types of defensemen. It's balance and it's leverage. And we already talked about the stance. You want to stay in that position, whether you're moving to the left or to the right. And once the ball is snapped, keep the wide base. If I'm going to stand there with my feet together, it's going to be very easy for somebody to knock me to the ground. Keep the wide base, take little choppy steps. The second and probably the most important factor is leverage. And when I'm talking leverage, I'm talking not on your hands and knees. You've got to get underneath a defensive player. You're always going to have a one-yard area. Come up, get in your stance, get down. Always think about getting underneath him. Get him up in the air and then move him back whichever direction you want him to go. You want to get down and as the ball snapped, he's going to come off and you're going to come off. Get your head underneath and get him up in the air. Don't forget, he's got two things to look for, you and the ball carrier. You got one objective, to move this man the direction you want to move him, to keep him from making a tackle. Use your head to steer him. You want to move him to the right, get the head over here. The next probably one of the strongest parts of your body, so keep him from moving to that direction. You want to move him to the other side, same thing. Slip the head on this side. Get him up in the air, and then take him backwards. Two key points, leverage and balance, and you'll be successful. There's two types of blocking for an offensive lineman. Blocking for the run and blocking for the pass. Let's start with the run, because there's a lot of different variations. Now, when you run blocking, you always want to change up, and that's what's good about this position. You can cut block, which I'll show you right here. Say if it's a sweep, the play's going outside, or you just want to change up a little bit and cut the man down. Simply come up. As the ball snapped, he's going to raise up. Shoot the head somewhere around between the knee and the thigh area. Always get it up high. And then from here, just roll him up one way or another, either this way, throw the head to the other side, and just roll him through this way. He's going to be looking for the ball carrier. You do that a few times, and the rest of the game, he's going to be playing patsies because he doesn't want to get his wheels cut. Say you're pulling on a sweep. You don't have to beat a defenseman. Say you've got a cornerback sitting out here as you turn the corner. He's a lot smaller. He's going to try to avoid you. And the thing is, don't miss him. You want to use something which is known as a cross-body block. Simply go out, lay out one way or another. He's going to be coming up. Just throw your body across. Catch him with your hips. Instead of having only this much area to block with if you go straight ahead, now you enlarge your body and you're, you're talking a six, seven foot area that he has to get around you. Simply throw your body across him and again, just roll him up. Be careful, not, don't try to hook him or they'll throw the yellow hanky on you, that's for sure. Just get him out in the open field. He's gonna try to avoid you. He's gonna try to make the tackle. Get out there, lay across him and simply roll him up. You don't wanna miss. The most important run block that you'll use is a drive block, something you have to do to occupy a defensive lineman for at least two or three seconds till your offensive back can slide through the hole. 
Now, the drive block is simple. As we talked earlier, keep the wide base, get underneath of him, get him up in the air. Now, from here, make sure you stay with your feet wide, keep the proper balance. If your feet get together or if you cross over, he can just push you to one side or another. He's still trying to keep the wide base. Keep the wide base, get him up in the air, use your head to steer him, and now take little choppy steps as you drive him backwards. Don't get too much weight forward. All he has to do is take one step back and you're down on the ground. Don't get too much weight on your heels or otherwise you're gonna go in the wrong direction. You wanna move the man off the ball, preferably two to three yards. All you have to do is occupy him. Remember, he's looking for the running back, not for you. Keep him busy. Now let's talk a little bit about one of my favorite blocks, the trap block. It can be executed in a number of ways, but my favorite is just a run and drive block. Get yourself down in a position, throw your weight back, either left or right, whichever way you wanna go. Throw the elbow back and go, straight down the line. The defensive player is gonna be waiting on you. You don't necessarily have to widen the hole, just make sure he doesn't close it. The more room you can give the back is always a big plus. Remember, get underneath of him. Use your shoulder and keep your head up. You don't want to take any chances of any injuries. As an offensive lineman, no matter what type of block you use, a crossbody block, a drive block, a cut block, or my favorite, the trap block, you only have to keep a defensive lineman occupied for one to two seconds, and the back will be through the hole. The second type of blocking we're going to cover today is blocking for the pass, which is totally opposite than blocking for the run. You want to keep your body in front of a defensive player. And nowadays, he can do a lot of different moves to try to get around you. His main goal, though, is getting to the quarterback. When pass blocking, again, from the same stance you use for the run, drop the hand, get the weight, come up in the air. Keep your body between a defensive player and a quarterback. And sometimes it's not easy. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Now get a defensive player here. There's a, two types of rushes. He can either be a power rusher or he can be a finesse rusher. A power rusher is going to come off the ball. He's going to try to get up under an offensive player, drive you back to the quarterback. The thing is, when you come out of your stance, your arms in tight. Keep your arms in, get the leverage. Use your arms to keep him up in the air. Get his arms off you. He's a power rusher. He's going to have his weight forward. Drop your butt a little bit lower. Push against him. Don't push forward. If he decides to go around you, you'll be flat on your face. Keep a good balance. Use the arms. Get him up in the air. Keep his arms off of you. All you want to do is keep your body between him and the quarterback. The second type of rusher is a finesse rusher. A guy with speed, somebody that likes to turn the corner. He's not going to try to run over you. He's going to try to use you as what they call a lever board. He's going to come into you, and then he's going to try a swim move, which is arm over. Use your feet, good balance. Keep your body in front of his. Always a wide base. You're better off to take little steps than you are big steps. Another type, he's going to use an arm under. Try to tie you up, get you to one side. Again, good base. Drop your weight and keep your body in front of him. Don't try to push him anywhere. All you want to do is keep him on the line of scrimmage. One position on the offensive line varies a little bit from all the others, and that's the center, the guy that starts a play. Now basically, his blocking techniques remain the same as a guard and tackle, but he has to do one thing first, and that's get the ball to the quarterback. That's his top priority. The center comes up, same as a guard and tackle, wide stance. He drops his other hand, one hand on the ball, one hand on the ground. Get yourself in a comfortable position. From here, he can drive block to the right, drive block to the left, or pass protect. But before any of that's done, he has to get this in the hands of somebody that knows what to do with it. Most centers will grip the ball with one hand. Bring it up, slightly tilt it to the side. It gives the quarterbacks the laces, usually right where he wants them. Some centers tend to roll the ball a little bit to the side. They like to grip it with the laces and then make the quarterback adjust. Some teams will use two hands. Put both hands on the ball, bring it up, but eventually only one hand gets to the quarterback. The left hand will slide off about halfway up. And then again, a lot of teams will do it with two hands this way in high school. Come up, lean on the ball, 
and as they snap it, they flip it back, giving the quarterback the laces. There's a lot of different ways to snap a football, the same as there's a lot of different ways to block a defensive lineman. But when you're snapping it before you even block, your top objective is to get this in the hands of somebody that knows what to do with it. One of my favorite drills to improve the techniques of offensive line play is a foot drill. And you know what a big key balance plays in any type of run or pass blocking. It's a simple drill. It's a wide base drill. You take short little steps and you go in one direction, then to the other, as I'll demonstrate right here. Get yourself in a proper stance, get down, pop up. Whether it's a run or a block, you always want to keep the wide base. Come up, move to your left, then move to your right. Get yourself up and just step through it the first couple times. Always keep the wide base. Don't take the big steps out here. You're not going to be able to move. Don't take the crossover steps because somebody's going to push you over. Keep the wide base, little steps. Just shuffle. The same thing we talked about in pass blocking. Keep your body in front of the defensive lineman. Be able to go in either direction. Of course, you want to go a lot faster than this. And our team, we usually do it about three to four times a day. It's a simple drill, pop up and move. Pick a spot about five yards to the left, about five yards to the right, and let's go. Get down, come up, and then go. It's up, and it's short steps. Drag the feet. Keep the hands in front of you. Don't lift them off the ground. The quicker and the closer you can keep them to the turf, the better off you're going to be. My safety tip for offensive linemen is a simple one. I know we all like to get downfield and help block for our running backs, but one key factor either get in the pile or stay away from it. If you stand around the pile, you're going to